Hey, what is up, guys? This is Cash Freak Tim from CashFreak.com, and today we are talking about GSAC macros. Now, if you followed any of our previous videos, you'll know we've went over some of the more basic elements of GSAC. We talked about how to do a bunch of different basic things in there. Now we're going to start moving on into the more intermediate and advanced topics. And the first one we're going to start with is macros. And macros are one of the most powerful features of GSAC, and once you learn it, I think you guys are going to like it a lot. So what are macros? Well, macros are similar to if you've ever heard of a batch file or a script. It's kind of the same thing. It's a way to automate multiple actions and put it into a single click. In other words, you click one button and it does a bunch of different things for you. That's the most basic example of what a macro is. And GSAC is no different. It kind of works the same way as a macro in any other program you might have used in the past. So why do we use macros? Well, there's two main reasons for using macros. One is time saving. And to give you an example, let's say every week you go into GSAC and you load a pocket query and you go through here and you select a bunch of caches you want to use for the week. You know, maybe you just want to go through here and you want to get specific caches. Maybe you just want ones that are large caches. Maybe you only want to get the ones that have tracking bugs in them. Maybe you only want to get the geocaches that are within five miles of your house. You do a bunch of different things in here and then send the information over to your GPS. Well, that can take a while. If you have to do that every single week and it's the same steps week after week, it makes more sense just to get a macro to run those features of GSAC for you. So it really is a time saver. The second reason you might want to use macros is macros can do some things that you cannot do manually on your own. And we'll talk more about that in the future. But let's get started talking about how to use macros. So there are two ways you can use macros. One is you can head over to the macro library, and the second is you can write your own. Now today we're going to be focusing on more on the macro library. Writing your own macros is a little more difficult. We're going to get to that in a future video. We're just covering the basics today. So today we're going to be talking more about the macro library. And if you want to head over to the macro library, you can get to it at gsec.net slash board slash macroindex.php. The URL should be at the bottom of your screen right now. So you can head on over to this site, and this is the list of macros that have been created by other people. And as you can see, you can scroll through this list. You can see there are literally hundreds of macros created already. So we're going to talk in the future about writing your own macros, but more than likely, there's probably already a macro written to do what you're looking to do. So I recommend heading on over to this page, just looking through the list, and you'll probably find what you're looking for. You'll find you can type in keywords. So let's say you have a specific GPS and you want to see what macros are available. You know, I, you could just type in keywords. Let's say maybe you have a Garmin Nuvi and you want to see what is available. You can just type in the keywords and it will search the macro library for you and show you anything with those keywords. So how do you use these macros once you find them? So let's say I need a macro to take all my geocaches and I want it to put all of the descriptions and the hints and the logs into a text file because maybe I want to send that text file to a digital device like a PDA so I can be paperless while I'm out in the field. So I would search for my keywords. This looks like a good one right here. What this one's going to do, it's going to basically output all the caches information into a text file that I can then transfer onto another device, or maybe I could just print out on a piece of paper to take with me while I'm out geocaching. So you'll see over here on the right hand side, it has just a quick description on what the macro does, the last date it was modified, the author, whoever modified it, what version they're on, and the exact name of the macro. Now if you actually want to download the macro, what you're going to do is you're going to click on it and it's going to take you to a page where it will actually have the file located. You can see here, it's right here at the bottom. GSAC macros always end in the extension GSK, so if you see a GSK file, that's probably the macro you're looking for. So to install it, we're going to click on it and it's going to download it to our computer and then we open the file just as we would open any other file. It's going to ask us if we want to install the macro. We're going to click on Go. 
and it will take us into the run macro page. This will show you all the macros you currently have installed, including the one you just installed yourself. You can select any macro from the list and run it with the run button here at the bottom. So I'm going to take the macro we just installed here and I'm going to click run. This particular macro is asking me for a folder to export that information into and I'm just going to call it test and hit go. The macro is going to start running and you'll see your screen flashing depending upon what it's doing and depending upon how many geocaches you have in your pocket query and what exactly the macro is doing it may take a little bit sometimes it takes you know I've seen macros take 10 and 15 minutes to do what they need to do so just let your computer go and whenever it's ready it will take you back to the main GSAC screen. Once the macro is done, it will give you a little OK confirmation. You're going to hit OK. And at this point, we know our macro has been run. So I am going to find the folder on my computer that was created. We called it test, if you remember. And here it is. It has all the geocaches in my pocket query. I can double click on them and go to the individual GC code. And I can look at it, and there is all of my information. Now, I could have done this manually. I could have went into each individual geocache and exported it to a text file. But as you saw before, I had, going back here, 500 geocaches installed right now. So that probably would have taken a little while if I would have done that manually. So by running that macro, it basically just automated the process for me. It went into each individual geocache and exported the description and hints and logs and all that information into a text file. So as you can see, the main benefit of macros is just time saving. Like I said, if I would have done this manually, it would have taken forever. One other trick I want to show you guys, if you remember back a couple videos, we talked about how to modify the speed bar up here, also known as the shortcut bar. And one little trick I like to do whenever I am putting macros on that I run all the time is I like to put a little button up here for each macro that I use all the time, just to save me a couple clicks. So what I can do is I can right click on any empty gray area, I can go to customize tool buttons, I'm going to scroll down until you see macros and I'm just going to select one of these buttons and I'm going to drag it up into an empty area and then hit OK. And then I need to map this button to that macro we just installed. So again I'm going to right click an empty, empty gray area I'm going to go to macro button configuration it's going to have me select the macro button. As you can see, this one is called M2 that I put up there. I have to point it towards the actual macro itself, the GSK file. So I'm going to select that, hit open, and then at that point I'm going to hit save. And that's it. My macro is now up at the top of the screen. Normally, if I wanted to get to my macros, I could go to macro, and then I could go to run manage, and it would take me back to that list we were in before. But now, just a single button press will run the macro for me. So again, this is just one more quick tip to show you how to run macros very quickly. So that's all we're going to cover today. We're just covering the basics of macros. We just talked about a little bit about what they are, how to install one, how to run one. In the future tutorials, we're going to start going over more information about macros. We're going to talk about how to write your own macros, how to modify macros other people have created, and we're going to get a little more advanced with GSAC. So stick with us. If you have any comments, you can leave them in the comments section. Also, head over to my website, cashfreak.com. And until next time, I will see you guys later.